Time to wake up. The milk train's in. Where am I? Paddington Station. Oh, God. Come on now, come on. Oh, God, know yourself. Oh, that's lovely, that, isn't it? That's oh, lovely. Thomas. I've got a crick in my neck. I'm filthy dirty and I'm perishing cold. Oh, you will. Could have done like him over there, look. Wrapped up like a parcel, ready for somebody to post him. Oh, I'll okay, so he ain't going nowhere. Oh, it's passed on, has he? <laughs> oh, shouldn't be surprised. Shouldn't be surprised if we don't know ever after this. What oh, as cheerful you are, isn't it? I'm freezing, Thomas. Can't we get a cup of something up? No, not yet, no, we're gonna. We're gonna save the money. Save it for what? Go on. Put your boots on. I'll give you your feet a warm. Just how much have we got, eh? How? There's no peace in this perishing station. For? Oh, back home. Catch in the 8.22. Change in a Swansea. Tom Watkins. Winvar Williams. Uh, Manneth Callery. Uh, that's right. You know? Well, I pass by. That's the best thing to do with Manneth. Pass by. Three <laughs> <laughs> more places, eh? Ah, oh, there's terrible it is down Manneth. Been to see our member of parliament about it. Aye. Uh, any good? Uh, Promised oh. a lot of things, didn't he, boys? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Where are you from, then? Ah, uh, Clangathlin way. Know it well. Beautiful it is around there in those mountains. No little village called Gethin. Heard of it. Hey, well, that's my hometown. Oh, is it? Long time since I've been back there. Miss it, do you? Well, I suppose I do a bit, yeah. Come on, win for me, Mr. Twain. Mm. Oh, I, I must go. Good luck to you. Yeah, good luck to you. Nice. Nice to meet you. Down, walking, Tom. Good luck to you, lads. Good luck. That's in the 822 to Swansea. Same line as Langathlan. He'll be on before nightfall. Bet you wish he was on it. No. No, it's been a long time. I'll tell you what. What? Let's go. Go? Go where? To Wales. Don't talk, Duff. We can't afford it. Go and get the tickets. Go on. Two pounds? Where'd you get that from? None of you mind. It's my running away money, in case you leave me in the lurch. Well, you better hang on to it then. Come on. Mountains. I never knew it'd be like this. Hey, like what? All this nature. Well, I've told you about it often enough, haven't I? Listen. What? Nothing. It's good, isn't it? Oh, 
funny little houses. Aye. This is where the village starts. Hey, where's all the people? Well, there aren't many, not in Gathin. Yeah, but there's no one. Listen, what's that? Oh, well, there's Daft Diane. I'd forgotten. Because it's Sunday, isn't it? They're all in chapel. Good job I changed into my best suit now, isn't it? Come on. and tell my word to every living soul that do dwell upon this earth. Amen. Who's he? That do not hear That's my, my words, brother. Said the Lord, what the shall heck? Shall falter and fall, He's a, minister. a wailing and a sorrowing to the ground. If the two strangers in our midst would care to be seated, the earth there shall be a gnashing of teeth and a terrible crying. The peoples that are deaf to my words, saith the Lord, shall be lost forever. Amen. Go ye and speak. He's quite oh, a performing, brother. Should we go around the stage door and go see him after? Go ye to all <laughs> nations and tell my word that all may hear my gospel and be saved. For all those who do not heed the word of the Lord shall fall and die and perish in hell forevermore! Amen! Good evening, Mrs. Parry. I trust the Lord will see an improvement in your lumbago. Adiochen. Nostar is Morgan. Nostar. Adiochen. Adiochen. over there, putting the hymn books away. That's all win with her. Mum hasn't changed much. I don't suppose they'll know you neither. It's a long way to come not to be recognised. His service is over, my friends. Time to lock up. Eli. Thomas? Never no, five hundred. Do my mum? Yeah, and I put your hand up. This is Sarah, ma'am. We just got off the train. Thomas, I don't believe it. They'll be wanting to stay. Oh, yes, indeed. You are pleased to see me, aren't you, ma'am? Taken by surprise, I am. I like to know beforehand. Tidy like. I know, ma'am. I know. And they'd be wanting supper. Of course. Well, there isn't much. There's an extra bit of stew I had put aside. Oh, Lord God, forgive us for the wrongs we have this day committed. Bless this good food for which we give thanks, knowing full well we are undeserving of such riches. Thy name be praised. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. Is it full of sin? What? London town. Oh. 
Eli says it's full of sin and terrible wickedness. And Mrs. Watkins won't even have the name mentioned in the house. Alvin, where's my link to us? It's on the dresser, Mrs. Watkins. Well, you never said you'd change his place. I'm sorry, I forgot. And I want a hot water bottle. I'll get it for you. Kettle's nearly boiled. How old are you, then? 29. Oh. You look older to me. Any babies? No. No. Oh. I trust you help Thomas with his work? Of course I do. Who does his work, Sarah? He's a chauffeur, Mrs Watkins. He's ever so good with motor cars. Does he work for the Lord? Uh, well, he did work for Lord Bellamy once of Eaton Place. Oh, I wasn't speaking of that kind of Lord, Sarah. I meant the Lord God. Tom's a chauffeur, Mrs Watkins, not a reverend like his brother. We can all work for the Lord, Sarah. Any task, however menial, can be done for the greater glory. Even a bed can be made for the glory of the Lord God. You can put my bottle in my bed, Alwyn. Yes, Mrs Watkins. Good minister. I can see Mum's proud. Oh yes. Aye. And and Alwyn. Oh yes. How long you been married now then? Eight years. Come Christmas. Aye. What? No little ones yet. Good Lord did not see fit to bless our union. Your mum don't like me. Oh, give her time. Oh, she wouldn't come now. You're just tired, that's all. But hungry? She don't believe in making you fat, your mother, do she? The sin of gluttony. It's not a bit like you said it would be. You painted such a lovely picture of your arm. Oh, but it is lovely. It's beautiful. Look at the mountain back there with the snow on it and the river running by the side. I'm talking about the scenery. The people. The people? What's wrong with the people? Well, they're not exactly friendly, are they? <laughs> Reserved, that's all. It'll be different when they get to know you. Who's she? <laughs> well, she didn't even kiss you, her own son. She ain't seen for ten years. She's pleased to see me. You don't talk to each other. We just don't show our feelings, that's all. Tom, that's what families is all about. How would you know? I know what I'm talking about. These are my people. We can keep them. It's a miserable hour. Let's go home soon. Where is it? Excuse me. Eli says, will you come down? We just come up. It's prayers. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot evening prayers. We've been to church. Chapel. Oh. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men, Thomas, Sarah, in reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verses 14 to 13. The man take a wife and find her not a virgin. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones. Oh, that's where that's from. What is that, Sarah? A bit about a poor girl being stoned for being out. I've heard of that. Righteous justice. It's cruel. Be quiet, Sarah. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, yeah, what about and the girl? she shall be his wife. Ah, oh, that's better. The man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. 
It's Amen. in the Bible. Yes, indeed, Sarah. In the Bible, we are not afraid to call a spade a spade. Or a skirt a skirt. We shall now pray. O oh, Lord God, Heavenly Master, hear us when we call upon Thee. Okay. We come to Thee with our souls burdened with sin. Help us, we beg Thee, to lighten this burden. The Swift there? Oh, sorry, I'm English. Oh, um, could we see the reverend, please? Yeah, come in. Hello, Nipper. Sam, see the Reverend. Thomas, oh, we knew he was back when we saw you in chapel. Melchior, say hello to your dad. Hello, Dad. Well, Thomas, what do you think of your little son? Grown, hasn't he? Told me. How could I tell you when I didn't know myself? Oh, come off it. You calling me a liar? Yeah. You know, the trouble with you is you've got no loyalty. I have, Thomas. I've got lots no, of loyalty. No, you haven't got a scrap. I tell you something I should have told you a long time ago. I'm your man. You see, and because of that, you owe me something. When a woman sees a man in trouble, the first thing she should do is stand by him. She can ask questions later, see. But at that moment, she's got to back him up. That's what I'd call loyalty. Well, fine one you are to talk about loyalty. Taking advantage of a poor girl like that. What about your loyalty to her? So quick to believe the worst of Thomas, you. I don't want to believe the worst of you, but if you won't tell me what really happened, what else can I do? Never entered your mind that I might have reasons, reasons? for not speaking out. Just at this moment. You've got to take me on trust. Watkins, tell me something. Did you or did you not know Bessie Evans ten years ago? Of course, ago? I knew her. We all did. So you admit it? I don't admit anything. But you, you knew about the baby? Yes. And that you was blamed? Yes, I knew and that And you too. left here, didn't you, just after that night? That's right, well, I did. Well, that proves it, Does Thomas. It? it proves you had a guilty conscience. I am not the father of that Bessie child. Bessie says you are. Well, she's wrong. She's its mother. And if you was half a man, you'd admit it and all. All right. I admit it. I am the father, all right? Is it? It's me, ma'am. Come in, Thomas. I hear you've got one of your heads. That's surprising, is it? I suppose not. I'm not sure I want to speak with you, Thomas. All right, ma'am. Oh, come back and sit down. Over there. Got bags under your eyes. Didn't you sleep? No, not much. Well, it's only to be expected, isn't it, after what happened last night? Where's Sierra now? She went down to breakfast in front. I needed some sleep. I heard you last night. Words you were having you and Sarah, weren't you? Yes, that's right, Mum. I thought so. Very loud voice, your Sarah. Oh, we were all nice and quiet here until you two came. 
at peace and everything settled and now all this trouble starts up again just because you decided to come back? I haven't finished. Yes, she's a very pretty girl, you are Sarah, but flighty. Not a very serious person, as you know. Oh, she has her moments. Good wife, is she? Yes, ma'am. Yes, she's a good wife. Funny, that. What's that then, ma'am? Well, some way, I never thought you'd get married. I'm certainly not to a foreigner. Bonjour. Now I'm English. Oh, what can I get you? Uh, perhaps some postcards. Oh, we'll buy there. Love these. And uh, uh quarter giant handbags. We only sell them by the one. We'll have five ones then. New to these parts, you? Yeah, from London. Oh, that's a long way to come. Uh, I've, I've come about a job, a, a position. Oh, yes. Does the, um, does the squire live very far from here? Sir James Hamilton Ellis. No, no, not far. I've got an interview with him this afternoon. Parlour maid. Oh. I didn't know he wanted one. Well, you go through the woods at the end of the village and it's the big grounds that leads off. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks ever so much. He's not a bad old thing. Mind you, he likes his house so as you can eat off the floor. <laughs> now, where's the bag? <laughs> Lovely looking little boy out there, him and his mum. Who are they then? Oh, Bessie Evans, that is, and young Melchior. Nice looking lad. Nice looking father, wasn't it? Oh, he's, uh, he's dead, is he? Uh, no. What then? Uh, just not here anymore. It doesn't do to talk about such things. Now, there's your humbugs. That'll be uh, tuppence farthing altogether. Yeah. Oh, yes, life's hard for some. Take the reverend. Pardon? He's had his cross to bear. Oh, yes. What cross was that? Oh, them two out there, that little boy and his mother. I shouldn't say this, but uh, born out of wedlock, the child was, see. Oh. It was the minister's brother that gave her the big trouble. <sighs> Terrible scandal it was. And then the Reverend had to take care of her and the child to atone for his brother's sin. How do you know it was the minister's brother? Well, I seen him, didn't I? I saw it happen. Well, almost. <laughs> I used to live in a little cottage by the edge of the squire's woodsea. And late that night, ten years ago, I saw him. Thomas Watkins, large as life. Did you see his face? Well, no, not his face, just his behind. Uh, the back of him, that is. But it was him, I know. His dark hair and his walk, the right size and build, and a particular coat he always wore. Very loud check. Never did like that check. Vulgar it was, but unmistakable. He came out of the woods very late. Running he was. And that was the night that Bessie was overcome. Oh, hello, Mrs. Pritchard. You two stamps, is it? You, uh, you know to keep this matter to yourself. I'm sure we don't like nasty gossip, do we? No, of course we don't. Oh, you got your handbags and your postcards. Yeah, thanks very much. Good day to you, then. Good day. Well, now, Mrs. Pritchard. How's your Elsa this morning? Coming along nicely, I hope? That's me. What can I get for you? Oh, I'd like to buy some ribbon. Oh, plenty of ribbon. All colours, all sizes. Red, yellow, green, blue. <laughs> Nobody wants coloured ribbons in this village, except for the children now and then, and even they mostly have brown for their pigtails, poor little devils. Oh, pardon me. 
language. It's all right. Uh, what do you want the ribbon for? Excuse me for asking, but it helps me to help you if I know. Well, I'm for me bloomers, if that's what you think. <laughs> bloomers. <laughs> that reminds me. Got some pretty garters hid. <laughs> Don't know why I keep them. <laughs> Women of the village would have heart attacks if they saw them. <laughs> Still, it uh, cheers me up to have a... <laughs> A look now and then. <laughs> Talking about cheering up, uh, how about a drop of something? Pardon? A little drink, just to keep the uh, the cold. Lovely. <laughs> well, you come through. Got a nice room in the back. We can be private there. <laughs> oh, no hanky panky planned. I assure you. I believe you. I can't think why. It's my dishonest face. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> well, you go through. <laughs> I'll bring the ribbons through, and then you can choose. <laughs> Could do with a drop of something myself. <laughs> what are you doing in this part of the world? You're from England. I can tell. I've, uh, I've come about a position at the manor. Oh, and you want some ribbon for your Sunday hat to impress yeah, the squire. That's all right. <laughs> I like the red. So do I. But if you go around here wearing red, and they'll think you're a fast piece. Go on. <laughs> True as we're standing here. Now, you have a drop of this. There. Oh, uh, take a seat, will you? Ah. Danny Hatch. <laughs> yes, you like the squire. Yes, nice as you said. Oh, yes. What else did she say? Hughes the tongue, she's called. <laughs> like uh, wagging tongue. Oh, yeah, I got that impression. <laughs> she was, uh, she was going on about someone called Bessie Evans, what had this illegal baby. She was, she was hinting it could have been the minister's brother what done her wrong. Thomas Watkins? Oh, no. It wasn't him. How, how do you know? Because uh, Thomas Watkins and me were best of friends in those days. Oh, yeah. Very close we were. We used to go poaching together. We were together the night Bessie was attacked. Was you? Just finished setting traps for the squire's rabbits we had. Just before dawn it was. I said goodnight to Tom and saw him down the hill. When out of the woods comes Bessie. Crying she was and running. Well, I jumped back into the bushes because I shouldn't have been there, see. She ran right past. All disheveled she was and terrified. And soon after came this man. What man? I only know it wasn't Thomas. Well, who was it? Someone must know. Well, there's the man responsible. He'd know, wouldn't he? But she's not going to say, and Bessie herself, but she's not going to say. Sometimes I think she doesn't know anymore. Gone so vague she has. Where, where, where are you going? Uh, there's something I've got to do. Uh, one more before you go. No, I've got time. Uh, have I done something wrong? Just the opposite, May. Just a bleeding opposite. Bessie, now I want the truth. Oh, yes. Well, come in, will you? I'm with Thomas Watkins. We met last night. What do you want? The truth, Bessie. The truth? I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. What do you mean by blackening Tom's name? Thomas, Telling lies about him these I past never, ten years. I only told you. You never happened. did, did you, Bessie? You never told what really happened. No, I want the truth, Bessie Evans, once and for all. Don't hurt Who's me. Who's the father of your child? Go away! Not until you tell me the name of the father. But everyone knows! Say his name. Thomas! It wasn't ah! it! Thomas! Ah! And you bloody well know it wasn't! Let me go! Well, don't tell the truth, Bessie Evans. I'll shake you till your teeth fall out. Yeah, you so help me, I will! Damn me in hell for Who are you? I'm not saying! All right, ah! Bessie! Ah! It's all right, Bessie. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Listen, you've done a terrible thing. I'm not gonna blame you. You've had enough blame, I can see that now. But you did wrong. I I didn't mean to. I know, Bess. You only done it because you was frightened. But you've got to put it right now. 
Don't you see? Sometimes I feel ever so funny. Like I wasn't really here at all. That's because you're frightened. And I forget things. Like who was really Melchior's father? He told me if I was to breathe a word of what happened in the woods that night, that God would strike my baby down with some terrible disease. And I would die too and suffer the agonies of everlasting hellfire and damnation. That's how you keep quiet, Bessie. Why, only yesterday, I saw Melchior's father. Oh, we were so pleased to see him. But he didn't seem pleased to see us. But it, it wasn't him, was it? Who was his father? Who? Thomas. No, it wasn't Thomas. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now, listen, Bessie. Bessie, look at me. All you've got to do now is say the name of the man who done you wrong. Oh. That's all you've got to do, Bessie. No. Come on. All you've got to do is say his name. No. Tom, at least it soon will be when everyone gets to know. To think that all these years you've been taking the blame for something you ain't done. Shelley. But you can breathe again now because I found out the truth. Shelley, you've got to keep quiet about this. Oh, you're having one of your little jokes, aren't you? I don't want you to say a word. Not to anybody, do you understand? Tom, you're off your bleeding head. No, I'm not. But you've been wronged. I must speak out. Cheryl. Listen to me and try and understand. Here in Wales, things are different. Now, you're an outsider, so it's difficult for you to see it. In a small village like Gethin, we've got to live within certain conventions. We've got to protect our respectability. You knew, didn't you? You knew all along it was Eli. Eli is a minister of religion. So what? He is beyond criticism. He's not beyond sinning. What happened in this village ten years ago is over and done with. But you're not over and done with, Thomas. It's what people think of you now. It doesn't matter what people think about me. I don't live here anymore. I do not want the peace of Gethin disturbed. Do you understand? Do you know something, Tom? You're wrong. Mr. Jones, I'm glad to see you. Not so glad as I am to see you, my little flair de lis. Oh, that's French, or it would be if I could speak it. Yeah, no. What's the matter? You, you look ready to cry. Is it Mr. Jones, can I talk to you? You're... You tell your Uncle Byron all about it. Now, <clears throat> you have a drop of this. Now, just finish that off. Now, what's all this about? Well... Um, I'm not what I seem. Are any of us? Oh. <laughs> no, I suppose not. Well, here goes. My name's Sarah, and I'm Thomas Watkins' girl. Oh. Now, there's a revelation, isn't it? Mr Jones, I went to see Bessie Evans, and I got her to admit the truth. Did you, by Joe? How did you manage that, then? It wasn't easy, but I dragged it out of her. She told me it was Eli. Oh. Oh. 
Don't expect you want to speak to me no more. Not now. Oh, why ever well, not? Well, now that you know I let Thomas down in his hour of need. Listen, I understand that. You couldn't speak out, otherwise you'd have been put in jug for poaching. Mm. Now, don't worry about it anymore. Well, that's kind you are. <laughs> as well as pretty. <laughs> Thomas is a lucky man. Oh, I wish he agreed with you. Oh. As soon as I told him the good news, he went all quiet and told me not to breathe a word. You don't seem surprised. No. <clears throat> Could have told you that's the way he'd behave. But why? Well, it's really quite simple. You see, uh, Sarah. Sarah, it's, it's really quite simple. Tom has come back home. Well, this is the effect it has on him. The sooner we get back to London, the better. Yes, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you there. But, you see, what you must understand is this. That here in Wales, to have the member of the family being a teacher or a minister, or especially a minister, that's the highest honour a family can aspire to. A minister of religion is the most valued of men and will be protected at all costs. Now, this is what Thomas is doing. We have to keep up an outward respectability. There's nothing respectable in something that's based on lies. Yes, I rather agree with you there. All them Bible readings and prayers all the hour of the day and night. It's not healthy. Them chapel services, another one tonight. Uh, on a Monday, I ask you. Oh, damn it, yes, I'd forgotten. Are you going? Well, I suppose I'd better, seeing as how I didn't go last night. <laughs> if I can... Uh, Stand by then, that is. <laughs> yeah, he da. Hey? Oh, you know. <laughs> My brethren, we are gathered here this evening in remembrance of the founder of this chapel who died 40 years ago this very day. If it had not been for this good servant of the Lord, Mr. Josiah Ebenezer Elliot Jenkins, this splendid chapel... not been for Mr. Josiah Ebenezer Elliot Jenkins, this fine chapel would never have been built. We give thanks to the Lord for this good man. We give thanks to the Lord. He was a good and upright man, faithful in his marriage, ever pure in thought. It is a pity, is it not, that some of us do not follow the example of this good man and abide by the seventh commandment Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. God seeth everything. So shall ye be punished. So shall ye be punished. Ye shall be cast into the furnace of everlasting fire. There shall be a wailing and gnashing of teeth, but the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. But the righteous shall be few. We shall be very few. And for those of you who do not purify your lusting thoughts, and which of you is without such thoughts? You. And you. And you. And for those of you who do not, I will heap mischiefs upon thee, saith the Lord. You who have done wrong, adulterers all, fornicators all. Who 
are you to talk? Yeah, go on, have a good look, all of you. I can tell you a thing or two about him. He's a hypocrite. Be silent, woman! I'm not afraid of you. I know all about you, Eli Watkins. I know all about you. They that offend the Lord shall be damned. You're the one who's going to be damned. These people are going to know the truth once and for all. That man up there is a liar. <laughs> He's a whited sepulchre. He is a father of Bessie's child. She is possessed of a devil. Take her out! Leave her alone! You see this child? This innocent child was fathered not by Thomas Watkins, but by him. The most reverend Eli Watkins. It was you, not Thomas, but you. Tell him, Bessie. Tell him it was Eli, the father of your kid. Go on, tell him, Bessie. Tell him! Yes, it was the reverend. It was Eli, not Thomas. Oh, oh God, forgive me! <laughs> it is true! I saw him! I saw the reverend running from the woods. Hold your tongue! You're drunk! Drunk I may be, but I know the truth. And everyone's gonna know it. It was you running from the woods that night wearing Thomas's coat. Yes, that's the kind of man our preacher is. Where was Thomas then? Yes, where was Thomas? Does anybody know? Yes, I do. I know where Thomas was. He was out with me that night. All night, we were poaching the squire's rabbits. Always thought you were something funny about that man. I never did just him. Milk here. Come and sit down. I want to talk to you, man. Now listen to me. It's no good running away. I know I used to run away all the time when I was your age. It doesn't work. You've got to keep coming back, see? See, when you're ten, you need your mom. And I'll tell you something. Your mom needs you. More than ever now. Tonight, you found something out, didn't you? Eh? You found out you had a new dad. Well, that's not so terrible. By the time I was ten, I'd already lost mine. That was your grandfather. No, it'll take a bit of getting used to, but you'd have found out anyway if you'd have asked the right questions. I want you to promise me something, Melchior. Always ask questions. Hmm? Never stop asking questions. Tell me something. Can you read and write yet? No. Well, I'll see what I can do about that. After all, that's what uncles are for, isn't it? Now, go on. Wash your face before your mom gets back. Go on, now. Damage. Oh, I see. I thought we'd established that it wasn't me. Just wondered whether you decided what you're going to do yet. Well, if 
have to leave the village, you know that, don't you? Leave, Eli. I can't stay here without the respect. It's the first time for you, on a running away. Well, I'll tell you something, Eli. You've picked one hell of a time to start. You'd have to go a long way to make sure that the truth didn't catch up with you. He's your son, Eli. He has been for ten years. You've got a lot of catching up to do. The boy needs educating, man. If it's respect you value so highly, why not make a start trying to gain his? Everything. I ain't got much. Travelling light, is it? As usual. Mum's not speaking. Locked herself in her bedroom. Where's Eli? He's out walking. What's his last night? No, Sarah. He didn't come back from chapel till after he was all in bed. Then he was up and out again before dawn doesn't want to see no one. Aye, he'll be up at Craggy Ridge, where we always used to go to think things out. It's about the only thing we ever did have in common. I hope he's all right. I suppose I should feel worried, but I don't. If you go on chattering like this, you're going to miss the train. Come on, Tom. We've got to go now, love. Are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, indeed. Funny, now it's time. I don't want to say goodbye. I'm sorry, Owen. That's all right. I'm glad it's out in the open. Hurry up there! All right, all right, we're coming. I'm coming with you. Owen, where are you going? I'm going to the station to see Tom and Sarah off on the train. You stay here. There's work to do in this house. It can wait. I'm going to the station. Will Eli be very angry? I don't care if he is angry. You wait till I tell him. You can tell him anything you like, Mrs Watkins. I'm going. You wicked, disobedient girl. Mom, can I come up and say goodbye to you? I never, ever want to set eyes on you again, Thomas. Never look back. Isn't that what you told me last night after chapel? So I did. We've got ten minutes to catch that train. Come on, Tom. Come on with it, then. Get on with it. Oh, what's that at the back? You've got everything in yes, there. Yes, I've got the gates at the back, yeah. Go yeah. on, pull your back, sir. Yeah. Yeah. All well, come on. Back the back. Oh. Oh. Right. Shall we go then, Tom? Goodbye, Mum. God bless. She'll be all right, Tom. Next time you come? No. No, there won't be a next time. Right. Right, Marie, Jim. 